Welcome back. Time now 651. And as we mentioned, we're continuing to follow the ongoing Oahu water crisis. Uh, earlier today, top naval officials were getting grilled by state lawmakers as part of a legislative hearing. And joining us live tonight, State Representative Sonny Ganadin, who represents the Hickam, Pearl Harbor, and Halava Valley Estates area, right in the heart of uh, where this is all happening. Thank you so much for uh, being here. Good evening. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Thank you for inviting me on. Absolutely. Well, we just we want to jump right into it. It was it really got heated at times. Uh, the naval officials, uh, you know, answering those questions today, I think, was the first time I heard them mention uh, jet fuel as the source of it. We wouldn't go as far as to say that they believe that the tanks may have been uh, the source of that. Uh, you said in on that meeting, do you feel like they did a good enough job answering those questions? No, no, I don't. Um, for years, the United States Navy has assured the state legislature and the county of Hawaii, the county of Honolulu, that nothing like this would ever occur, that there is um, adequate safeguards, numerous forms of testing, and um, we're now looking at almost a worst case scenario. 93,000 human beings uh, are now displaced because they don't have fresh drinking water. Um, there are more questions than we have answers about the civilian water usage, including um, the very important Halava shaft, which represents 20% of the drinking water for urban Honolulu. Um, that might affect our economy, um, our the Board of Water Supply's capacity to issue new water permits well into the future. Um, so no, none of us are, are all that satisfied with the United States Navy's response. This is one of the few instances where Almost all elected officials are in agreement, um, including our federal delegation. Uh, the state House of Representatives urged out, sent out a fairly strong letter on the 6th um, asking for a water treatment facility, decommissioning of the tanks, and a plan um, given to us so that we can prepare for the 2022 legislative session. And I wanted to kind of ask you about that as well, because, you know, we've, we've heard we've heard about, you know, why this is a crisis and, uh, you know, what, what what the next steps are. But right now, I mean, f talk about the political side of this, too, because there was that order that was issued by the governor, you know, asking them to create a plan to fix the situation. So far, it seems that the Navy has kind of um, balked at that. And, and it, it, is there any tool at your disposal at the state level to, you know, hold them accountable? Or, or what do you see as the next step here? Hawaii Revised Statutes 340E. Um, this is one of the rare instances in which the state has authority over the federal government. Uh, keep in mind that um, the Navy must honor the law. They must honor the agreement that they entered into with the state to lease the state land and to use our collective and irreplaceable water source. Lines have really now been drawn. Um, this is a legal dispute over whether the US Navy is in a partnership with the state and the county and whether they must comply with our rules to ensure safe drinking water. Of course, they have their own rules, um, but uh, to lease our land, the state's land, um, and to use our collective water resource, of course, they are under the purview of the Department of Health. And it's under that, that um, agreement first entered into in 2015 that the governor uh, issued his most recent order. And I believe that it's legally valid um, and coming from a, um, fairly small state house representative um, to um, to say that, you know, the secretary of the Navy needs to comply is is, is something, but, it, but it's coming from all of us. It's coming from the Hawaii State House of Representatives. It's coming from our um, federal delegation and from our governor. Uh, we, we're in agreement. I know one of the complaints today was that there it took a while for results to come back for uh, you know the testing of this water. So will the state legislature, does it plan to create funding or, for some type of testing lab here in the islands to speed up the process? Uh, how is that being handled? Absolutely. That is of utmost concern that we don't have um, what they call TPH testing to um, figure out uh, carcinogens, um, the um, petroleum chemicals that make up JP8 and JP5 uh, jet fuel. Uh, we cannot um, um, assess those in a timely manner. I'm gonna use the, the term from the pandemic, point in time testing. We really don't have point in time testing for, um, for our water supply. And we need to develop that here um, in the state and on island prior to um, really moving forward. So, so we're at a lack of information and um, 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 
I won't be placing any blame, but but it's it's clear that we, we need to move on that. We need to move on adequate testing. And just, uh, you know, we're almost out of time, but just real quick, I know this hits close to home for you. You represent right at the heart of that. You know, what's the biggest fear from your constituents? Um, that they might not be able to loop, come back to their homes. It's a big deal. Um, also, that as we defuel uh, the Red Hill bulk fuel storage facility, that there might be more leaks. Um, keep in mind that not only are the tanks 80 years old, but the pipes are 80 years old, too, in some parts. Um, and so they connect. Um, this is going to really jeopardize the military's continual use of land here in the state of Hawaii. So it's a great concern moving forward. Absolutely. And uh, we, we appreciate your time. And I know we're, we're going to follow up on it for sure. All right. Thank you so much. And happy holidays. Thank Absolutely. you so much for being here. We appreciate it. And we did want to note, we also did reach out to the Navy to participate in tonight's discussions, but did not hear back. Meanwhile, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll be back